And I am just going to get started right now. Hi, everyone again. Thanks for joining. This is, uh, I'm, I'm Carrie Siegelhoff. I'm Vice President of Fundraising Solutions at Community Funded. I am joined today by Amy Walters from the Seven Hills School for um, another session of our peer reviews. Unfortunately, Rebecca Cushing could not join today. So um, our peer reviews are really just a chance for us to share successes and lessons learned, not only from our clients, but um, from schools and institutions all over the country. And thankfully, Amy was willing to share more about their new family onboarding and philanthropy today. So without further delay, I will uh, send it over to you, Amy. Great. Um, well, thank you so much. And Carrie, thank you for reaching out to Rebecca and I to um, present to this group. We're really excited. Um, we just had presented down at the Case District 7 um, conference earlier this year, and Carrie reached out. Um, and so my colleague, Rebecca, was supposed to be joining me this morning, um, and she came down with a bug. So she's at home getting better. Um, so I'm just going to, sorry, I'm in the right spot. Um, but we just wanted to talk about our program here um, about onboarding our new families that we really think has become a really great partnership with the admissions team and our development team as we think about how do we welcome new families into the Seven Hills community. Um, so we're excited to share kind of our plans with you. Um, so this is myself and Rebecca to tell you a little bit more about myself and Seven Hills. Um, Seven Hills is a preschool through eighth grade independent school in the East Bay of uh, Northern California. So we're about 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes east of San Francisco. Um, we are about to hit our 60th year as a school um, and have nine acres of beautiful prof property out in Walnut Creek, California. Um, we're a whole child school where we really, really believe in the balance of um, the social and emotional well-being of students that make you cognitively available, available to be um, in an academic rigorous program. So we really balance the two of um, whole child, which really means academic rigor, but also social emotional balance. So um, that's kind of what our philosophy is. Um, we're about 425 students. I'm in my 10th year at Seven Hills as the director of development. Um, I've also been lucky enough to be uh, a parent of students here at Seven Hills. Um, I have two boys who are now in high school, but they came to middle school at Seven Hills. So I've seen um, the Seven Hills community from both hats of an employee and a parent. So I've been pretty lucky. Um, and so kind of what we wanted to share about were kind of the key takeaways of um, what we hope you walk away with. Um, we hope you walk away with what a new family onboarding program can look like, um, the important partnership between the admissions department and the development department, and also um, how you think about your school and your program um, as you welcome families and build relationships, and then also really lean into the philanthropy, philanthropy piece um, so that parents really have an understanding of why um, an independent school is asking for, um, asking for gifts. Um, so what's a new family onboarding plan and why does my school need one? I think, you know, if, if Rebecca was here, she would say, you know, families are invited into the Seven Hills community around March when they accept, make their acceptance to the school. And then what we found is that there was this long lag between March and when they started school in August. So we really felt like it was important to create a number of touch points for our families between that March date and when they come back to the school in August. So that by the time they were here, they were feeling like they knew a couple people, understood what was coming up and really kind of could quickly get um, feeling comfortable and included in the community. Um, and we just feel this connection just launches them into a successful partnership with the school um, in terms of how we communicate, what our flow is, what our philanthropy program looks like. So we just really worked hard together to make a smooth transition from the admissions department to our development and parent relations team. Um, and if we were standing here too, you know, I wish um, Rebecca was here because to really talk about that synergy between the two departments, I think a lot of schools sometimes, you know, admissions is separate and they're nervous to hand off their new families who they've worked with and developed these relationships over to the development team who really kind of starts talking about um, giving and, you know, why fundraising is important, but we really feel like it's a great partnership because we want to make sure it is a smooth transition 
Um, the admissions teams and our new families have worked so closely together for a number of months to make the decision to choose Seven Hills that we really feel like we want to make sure that relationship continues. Um, and so we really work well together starting in March, thinking about the spring, planning out the summer um, to make sure it's a smooth transition for our parents. So it really becomes about the parents. They're central to everything. Um, and not necessarily the individual siloed departments. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, and I think we start really early, um, we're gonna start in the spring here pretty soon to kind of work together on these timing and touch points that parents get to see. Um, this is just an example of what we, um, of the things that we think about and we work on with parents throughout the fall. Um, and I think what's most important is that we've really learned that we have to be flexible, especially over the last two years, as you know, typically we would do a number of in-person events. We really had to be flexible about creating virtual events and virtual spaces and different communications so that we were making sure our parents were still feeling included and safe and um, welcomed, even though they weren't allowed on campus because of coronavirus. Um, we just in the last two weeks have invited parents back on campus um, for a couple of events, but it's been really the first time in two years. So um, we really felt like that was an important piece is to really adjust what we've been doing. Um, so this is just kind of an example of, of the timing and touch points that we've kind of put together. Obviously it's a snapshot and we're happy to share any of this information with you afterwards. Yes, we are. I can uh, work with Carrie. I just saw the question come through that we can definitely work with um, Carrie to make the spreadsheet available. Um, and then I thought if Rebecca was here, she would kind of be talking about the admissions piece and then I would transition to the development piece. So I'm going to kind of wear my Rebecca hat, who is our director of admissions, um, to kind of talk about some of the things that, you know, we do with families um, over the course of the month. So I, over the course of the summer. So I think one of the most important things, I'm sorry, I think I skipped a slide. So the first thing we do is we just kind of recreated this new event called a new parent celebration event. We're having it actually in two weeks. It's going to be on a Friday evening, and we are inviting our parents with students to come on campus um, to get a tour, um, to get some swag. We have a step and repeat so they can take some pictures with our um, school mascot. The whole idea is to make them feel welcome and to make them feel excited about what's, what's to come. Um, this year, we're also going to do some tours because so many parents haven't been on campus. Um, typically, we would do a visit day during the admissions process, but we haven't been able to do that. So this is just going to give them another way to become more familiar with this, um, more familiar with the school. Um, we'll have our admin leadership there, our admin um, educators there, um, and we'll also have some parent volunteers. We always try and um, sprinkle in our parent volunteers um, throughout these events so that they can not only have staff people to talk to, but also other parents. And then we're also talking about, do we still need to have a virtual component? So if families aren't quite comfortable or not available, that they can come to. So that is um, our first event that'll come up in May. Um, the other thing that we do is we work with our room parents. Um, we're definitely K through eight. So we lean on our parent volunteers quite a bit. Um, we create opportunities over the summer for our new families to meet with current families so that the students really have some familiarity with the students who are, who are already in the class so that when they come on the first day of school, they know some people that they're coming to school with. So they're not the new kid the first day of school. Um, we do two to three of these over the course of the summer. We try and keep them really low key, a meet up at a park, an ice cream social. Um, you know, the middle schoolers might go bowling, but we really just try to keep it an, an opportunity for students to meet other students. Um, we have parent volunteers who kind of organize it and we just keep track of the schedule. Um, to make sure that there's opportunities throughout the summer. And we definitely get feedback that this is one of the most important things we do for new families, especially for the students, so they feel like they have the chance to meet someone else. Sometimes it can be a whole grade level that gets together or is invited, and then sometimes they do smaller. It just kind of depends on age and stage about what's what's best for that um, for that family. Um, as we kind of head into the new year, we definitely have a number of touch points throughout the fall to get parents um, up to speed with what we're doing. Um, we started this event a number of years ago called the New Parent Fall Social. We actually hold it at our head of school's home. Um, it's the Sunday before school starts. 
so that um, our parents can meet other parents in their grade level, meet some parent volunteers, meet some board members and the admin leadership. Again, it's just another opportunity to bring them into the fold. Um, and it's not such a big environment. It's a pretty smaller event, maybe 60 to 75 people at the head of school's home, which is usually lovely. Um, and we just, we try and pair people together so they can see and meet other new families from their grade. Um, I think one of the things we talk about a lot is who is a new family. So is it a family with a student coming to Seven Hills for the first time? Is it a family who has a new student joining Seven Hills, even though they've already had another student? Um, so we really kind of talk about that a lot. Uh, we also are a school with a number of faculty members who have students here. We treat them just the same. So if you're a faculty member and you have a new student coming to the school, they would also be included um, in the social. So in all of these events, but we have to be very particular about who gets invited to what, because sometimes you can overlook if you're not careful. So you just, we think about that a lot as well. Um, we also have just shifted recently to a new family orientation. Um, this event we've made now um, after the new family social, and we've turned this to be completely virtual. Um, because we do most of our registration process and all of our forms online now, there's no reason to come to school to turn any physical forms are in. I know that my sons go to a public school and when we register for the public school, we have to sign all these forms and you have to go and deliver them. Since we don't need to, we don't do that here, we had to create a moment to really give some of our parents just the nuts and bolts of what's the first week going to look like? What's the first couple of days? What do I pay attention to? So this new family orientation, we turned into a virtual event and it's worked really well where we invite folks in. Um, we also call it the official handoff from admissions to development so that families know who the development team is. Um, on our team, we have our annual fund director, an events and parent relations uh, coordinator, um, and our communications director. So we kind of are the team that really handles most of the parent relations and events and the PIA and the fundraising. So it, we feel like it's important for them to put a name and a face together um, so that admissions can shift to the next year and then we can bring them into, bring them into the fold a little bit more. So we definitely, we say it out, out loud that this is the official handoff. Um, we also have different student orientations going on, but the purpose of this one is to talk a little bit more about Here's how we do communications at Seven Hills. We have a Monday memo. This has important weekly information that you want to pay attention to. Every now and then you'll get a standalone email. We try to keep it limited, but sometimes there's important information that we want you to see. It could be a note from the board chair, a note from the head of school. It could be about conferences coming up. It's bigger picture items that we don't want them to get lost in the weekly email. Um, we talk about our social media presence. We talk about Vidigami, which is a photo sharing site that we have. We just try to get them comfortable of how to think about communicating with the school. Um, we give them an inside training on what we call our JAG zone, which is our internal website, and show them how to use the directory and how to use how to sign up for lunch and what car line is going to look like. So we just try to answer as many questions as possible so that our parents are ready to go on day one. Um, they might have questions about uniforms, just things that the nuts and bolts. Um, we also then at the end have time for them to break out um, into their division levels with the division head. So middle school, lower school, and our ECE um, early childhood program, they get a little bit time with the division head to again, just answer and ask any questions that they have. Um, and then I think the other piece that's really important is just to have a solid integrated communications plan, communications plan over the summer. Um, we often say to parents that the beginning of the school year is like drinking from a fire hose. So we try to, as much as possible, limit the information we give on a needed basis. So, you know, you're going to get a welcome from the head of school in August. Then we're going to start getting division head communications. Then we're going to start layering in Monday memo with more nuts and bolts. So we really try to be um, thoughtful about how much information we're sharing with parents um, and when they're getting it, but we know that it's a lot. So we really, again, that comes back into that partnership piece of admissions, development, communications, and all being on the same page 
and also working with the division heads of what they need communicated, what events are coming up. Um, and we really also lean on our role par the room parents also. Um, we ask our room parents from the school year to actually serve all the way through the summer so that they can help with the onboarding of new families. So they're the ones who are organizing the summer socials. Um, they're the ones who are really trying to welcome in uh, the new families from a family perspective um, and parent to parent perspective, which we also find very helpful because sometimes the parents know better than us about the nuts and bolts of getting kids ready for school. Um, so, you would, if you saw the full spreadsheet, you would kind of continue to see all these touch points we have with families um, leading up to the start of school. Um, and then if we start thinking about philanthropy and how do you try to um, tell the Seven Hills story of why philanthropy, philanthropy is important, we find that at Seven Hills, a number of uh, families are new to independent schools. So they've moved to the East Bay because of the public schools, thinking that that was going to be their choice. And when they realize that that's not quite the right fit for their families, they often find Seven Hills. Um, and so paying tuition and being at an independent school is something they really hadn't planned for. So we're constantly trying to educate parents on the importance of philanthropy. And yes, while you're going to pay tuition, there's also going to be a giving component of what we ask all families to do and participate in. Um, so we launch our annual fund. We wait a little bit. We don't start in September. We wait until probably the second half of October because we feel like it's really important for us to have multiple touch points with our families, both new and returning, to make sure they're feeling settled, their children are settled, they're understanding what our, our priorities for are for the year. They're having some good experiences under their belt. Um, we have an all-parent community dinner in October. We publish our annual our annual report. So we try to create number of touch points um, before we launch the annual fund. And a key component of that is are these new philanthropy new family philanthropy meetings. Um, we started these about uh, four years ago um, because what we were finding is that uh, new family giving was pretty flat and that the default number was about $1,000, even though we were asking families for a leadership gift of $2,500. And that's kind of our leadership number that we ask all families to consider. We have very high parent participation. We're actually at about 92 to 95% every year, and that's great. But that became the focus was the participation and not the contribution number. So um, we kicked off these new philanthropy meetings about four years ago, and what they've turned into um, is a really great opportunity to connect with families, tell our giving story and the reason giving is important, talk about the annual fund and what they can expect, um, and for us just to make a name and a face connection, especially with parents not on campus. So we shifted, while we used to do these in person, we now do these virtually. We've also partnered with our development committee on the board and we all, um, we partner together. So it's either myself or our annual giving director um, along with a board member. So it's one staff member, one volunteer who can talk about the parent piece. Um, and we just talk, we're very upfront. We're very um, about what the reason for the meeting is. It's to talk about philanthropy and how to get involved. Um, and we've had incredible results um, over the last four years. I think it's probably one of the most important things we've done as a school. Um, let me see. So these are, if you can see, these are statistics. Um, these are, if you look at it, the yellow is, hold on, let me just find my, sorry, I don't have my bar. Let me just pull something up really quickly. All right. Okay, sorry about that. So if you can see that the um, the yellow is non-attendee annual fund donor averages and the blue are the attendee averages. So you can see that over time, the folks that have attended the meeting are giving much higher than those who have not joined one of the meetings. Um, this year is a little bit of an anomaly, but we also feel like we've done a really good job at telling our philanthropy story in general. 
Um, in the meeting, we say the number. We say that we ask all parents to consider a leadership gift of uh, $2,500. Some give more, some give less, but we really feel like it's an important part of what we're doing um, so that we're telling our story versus asking a friend, like, what do you do? How much do you give? Um, so we feel like that's been a really important part. It's been a great partnership with our trustees. Um, and I feel like parents really appreciate just the um, candidness we have in the conversations. It's not a hard sell, it's just information. And I realize I talk very quickly out here in California. So um, that's kind of our presentation for now, but that kind of gives you an overview and I'm happy to deep dive into any area that um, you feel you'd wanna learn more about. Thank you, Amy. And just for everyone on the call, I am moderating the, the question in the chat. So if you have any questions, please feel free to, to drop those in there. I know, Amy, when you said that 92% participation, my jaw dropped and probably everyone on the call, um, at least my, my university friends, that number is unheard of. So that's really cool. And just obviously a testament to the work that you're putting into it and being intentional about those meetings. Um, I also thought the slide was really interesting, just seeing um, the 20, 2020 and 21 number. I mean, that was, the last two years have been tough, but that was an especially tough year, just with probably not even being in person at all and parents being so thankful that their kids are able to go to school, you know, just kind of that first year of figuring out what this new normal is. So that's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, we've definitely seen an increase in giving over the last two years, especially through the annual fund, because I think there's definitely a gratitude piece. Mm -hmm. um, we managed to open five days a week, um, uh, five days a week for all students a year ago, October, when most of our public schools were still closed. Most of our public schools around us were closed all year. So we were, that was definitely a differentiator. Um, and it wasn't like two days a week, it was five days a week for all students who wanted to be here with a virtual option for those who didn't. So that was a win for us. But what we have found is that the numbers have stayed at that level and they haven't come down. So if someone stretched last year because of they were grateful, they've stayed at that level. Um, I'd also say about the participation, that's definitely something that has been around for a while. So we've really focused on that. We do partner, we do have annual fund class captains um, who work really hard on our our um, individual parents. So we um, launch our annual fund campaign in October and probably about three or four weeks later, we have a phone-a-thon, which is now really kind of just become a texting-a-thon. Mm -hmm. um, and our parents are so used to giving that they actually, our biggest week of giving is the week before the phone-a-thon because they don't want a phone call. <laughs> so it's really the only reason we do it. We don't make that much money at the phone-a-thon, but we, leading up to it, we definitely, we definitely do. And our class captains do a lot of that follow-up. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, we do have a couple questions coming in. Uh, right. One right. is, what other opportunities in philanthropy do you give them beyond the gift of funds? Yeah, so um, we really try at our school, um, we have over the years cre um, created as much as we can an inclusive tuition. So really, when you are paying your tuition, as much as possible is included in that field trips, technology, parent events, student events. We've kind of, our lunch program is included in that. So we really tell parents that this is your inclusive tuition and we're gonna ask you twice a year to give. We're gonna ask you to be part of the annual fund and we're gonna ask you to participate in the auction. So um, our auction raises about 250 to 300,000. Our annual fund this year, which is a record year is about 750. Um, so those are the two main ways that we ask parents to give. And then we also tell them, Every now and then in your time at Seven Hills, we will likely have a major campaign for something that's gonna be a capital project. Um, so we're in kind of a quiet phase on a capital effort right now. So we include that. Um, before any of our giving starts in terms of that communication piece, we send out an email that says, here's how to think about giving at Seven Hills, um, just to remind parents. So before we start these new philanthropy meetings, we've sent that out and it explains, annual fund is our top priority. Auction is another way to get involved. Here's how you can volunteer for anything on campus because that's just as important for us. Um, but those are the really the only two um, two ways and two things we ask for. Um, and parents kind of are just in that cycle. So we really try and 
set the expectation at the beginning of the year so they can think about their philanthropy more holistically. Um, but we don't do a walkathon or a runathon or a readathon or any of that. We try and keep them very focused on these two things. And I think parents appreciate that. Um, we've gotten good feedback about that. Great. Okay. Thank you. Another question. Does your school have families who receive financial aid? If so, do you still ask those families to consider a leadership level gift? Yeah. So that's really interesting. It's one of those things that we've really partnered with the admissions and financial aid team this year. Um, typically in the past, what we did, um, our tuition assistance is a blind, pro, a blind process and only the, um, for our school, only the admissions team has that information of who's on financial aid. So in order to respect that privacy, we have typically asked everybody to give at the same level, but then we partner with the director of financial aid to say, to send an email before that solicitation goes out that says, in the mail, you're going to receive this ask at the leadership level. Um, please know that every family can do something different. We hope you participate at a level that's comfortable for your family. So that was what we used to do. Um, this year, as we've really had a lot of more conversations about inclusion and belonging, um, we really kind of thought through that and thought, what if you missed that email and you got that letter that says, please give a gift of 2,500, how would that feel? Like they don't know me or they don't understand my family. So we then this year partnered with the admissions team. Um, they have identified to us and just our, our, a small group of us, um, who is at who has tuition assistance of 50% or above. And for those family, we made it just a participation ask. So that made it feel a little bit like we understood them a little bit better. Um, and it wasn't as overwhelming to feel like, oh my gosh, this is something I can't do. Uh, and we felt we felt good about that shift. So, um, you know, I think most of our families on tuition assistance still give at a level that makes sense for them. Um, and then with uh, auction, we offer a reduced cost for the ticket. And so we really make it a balanced community builder with fundraiser at the same time. So, right. but it's a hard, it's a, it, for the longest time, the admissions team didn't want to reveal the information, but we really felt like as we have more conversations about diversity, inclusion, and belonging as a school, it felt like the right step to take. Um, and there's that trust piece too between our two teams that you can actually have that conversation and we kind of talk through different scenarios. So I think that was really important in our work and we'll probably revisit again next year. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I think you've had, you're showing trust between both of both of you, you know, they're sharing information about new families and kind of handing that off to you to be taken well care of and vice versa. Yeah. Um, so and that's important. One thing I probably didn't, I didn't say um, going through the slides was um, there's a point in the summer or late spring that we actually sit down with the admissions team and they walk us through all the families that are coming in and they can tell us um, this is someone's new, first year in independent schools. This is their only child. They have three more chi children coming. They're going to be a great volunteer. They told us about it in the interview. So they give us just the color commentary. And that's another place where there's a lot of trust, right, of sharing this information. Um, they'll tell us, like, we think they'll be a, a, a strong donor um, without revealing all the details, but just enough color commentary that as you're starting to get to know families and you're starting to identify people for leadership positions, maybe there's a room parent in there, maybe there's a, for us, a PIA chair, maybe a board member. So we just are getting that information a lot faster because then you can also connect with those families um, much more quickly as well. Yeah, absolutely. If you know enough, especially the first time meeting them, that's right. really important. Absolutely. absolutely. Another question. Yeah. Fantastic results. How do you offer the one-to-one -one giving program to your families? Is that conversations with indiv individual families? So in terms of asking, like, just to get clarity, so how do we ask each family for their gift? Yeah, Kristen, um, feel free to, to type more in the chat about that particular um, question if you're still on. So if I, I'll interpret it how I think the question is. Um, so for the meetings, we invite families individually to meet with us one-on-one. -on -one. So that's when we get that true one-on-one -on -one ask in terms of here, you're going to get a solicitation in the mail. Here's what it's going to say. And here's what we hope you can consider. Um, for the rest of our families, we do it mostly direct mail. Um, unless there are a few families that we're really asking to stretch. Um, you know, we have, you know, we don't have many 
um, families who can give five figures and above, we probably have in our $10,000 and above range, we probably have 15 to 20 families who, who hit that level. Um, so we might work personally with them. Sometimes they're board members, so that's how we work with them. Um, but otherwise, it's pretty direct mail focused until we get to the phone-a-thon. Um, and in the letter, we have segments where um, if someone has been a leadership donor, we thank them for their gift in the past and then give them a certain number to consider. So we definitely, that's how we try and get the increase. Um, we're small enough that we can do it that way. Um, so we definitely, when we send out their solicitation letters, there's a specific ask in the letter. Um, but there's also just this huge general group that get just the leadership level. Um, yeah, I would have to say one other thing we did this year, we did raise our leadership level from 2,500 to 3,000. And if you are looking for a little boost in your annual fund, definitely recommend it if you haven't done it in a while. Um, we didn't have any parent come in at 2,500. We only had parents come in. If a parent was giving at the head circle level, which is our leadership level, everyone made the jump. No one stayed at 25. Everyone popped to 3,000. Nice. Nice. Yeah. And Kristen did follow up here. I think, right. um, I think this is, if I understand correctly, the, the new family philanthropy meetings that you're having, um, do you call the individual families and how many are you meeting with to have those conversations? Yeah. You know what I have, I probably have that. I'm going to stop my share just so I can kind of find that information too. So let's say we have, um, so we send an email and the parent can go on and sign up on a sign up genius. Um, and then they, they sign up for a slot and then we fill in board members to pair with them and a staff member. So those are, that's how we do it. We have, and again, if anyone wants it, we can kind of show you what a spreadsheet would look like and, and how we get it set up. We kind of have chunks of time. I think we do it over four or five days and we have like, we're going to do it from, we're going to have a morning slot. We're going to have an afternoon slot. We're going to have a Friday slot. Um, so we kind of try and base it on what we think people's patterns are. We do a Sunday slot for parents who are two family you know, two income families. Um, so we have probably four days, big chunks of time, maybe a full day, uh, 30 minute check-ins. Um, people sign up for them. We send out confirmation emails and let them know who's going to be joining us. And then we have this great conversation. I hope that. That seems really efficient because you can kind of just sit for a couple of hours and you have them scheduled. Everyone's there and can talk through. Um, yeah. So it's not like and all over the place. We have just chunks of time that we've worked. And I will tell you, there are, there are a lot of, um, you definitely, your extrovert side has to come out and you're pretty exhausted by the end of the day. Yeah. Um, but they're so worthwhile. And I think we've developed incredible relationships um, with our newer families who attend. Um, going back to how many, um, it's not everyone. It's maybe in a given year, if we had 40 new families, I think we've done 20, maybe half, maybe less. But even doing just that number makes a big difference. So on the slide, the first year, I think we did 12 and those were all in person. And we thought that was a good number. And the next year, I think we did 20. And the next year we did 30. And then this year we did 20. So, you know, yeah. but our giving numbers were really high this year. So I don't know if people are understanding better, word is out because now we're in our fourth year of doing these. Um, so I think that, I hope, I hope that helps. So where you want the numbers to be higher in terms of you want everyone to do it, we really also make it um, self-selecting. Sure, yeah, yeah. I think that's it for any questions, unless anyone wants to squeeze one in there at the end, but anything else you wanted to mention, Amy? Thank you so much, this was really helpful. Yeah, no, I would just say, again, I think building that relationship with your admissions team is so key. And I think for us, it's all about um, how do you make your families feel welcome on campus and what are the fun, interesting, creative ways you can do it. Um, and also not be shy about having the gift conversation with them. Um, I think they appreciate it as much as some people are nervous and it might feel awkward at first. I do think they appreciate it. So they understand what the flow is. And it's such an, especially at the K-8 level, it's such an education. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you. This is all great. I will, for everyone still on, there's a recording today. So I'll send that out. Amy, you and I can get together on the spreadsheet piece as well and make sure we share that with the group. Absolutely. Uh, thanks again to everyone for attending. Thank you, Amy, for, for presenting today. And I hope everyone has a great rest of their day.
Thank you. Thank you.